how do we create big concepts from the from the beginning? I try to think at least of a concept that's kind of high concept that you can kind of if you tell somebody in a minute and they're, they're like, oh, that sounds cool. I think it's a good idea, and then somebody will say, well, I like the idea. It's a little compli. It's going to get a little complicated though because because of A, B, and C. Most overrated part of the screenplay equation is the idea. Ideas are really pretty useless and worthless. I have a string of scripts with like their. They've got great scenes, great characters, but the idea is way too small. Most of the movies that win the Oscars are not high concept. When I sit down to write something, it, usually I start with a concept. I'm very concept driven, just because I think that's working at a studio for so long. I know that the concept is what's going to get people's attention or not get it. So I start with usually a concept. Um, and then think of some scares as well, and then start you know with building a story around the concept um, is how I approach it. But I know a lot of people start from like characters, and some people start from a story. So it's everybody's got their own personal kind of creative style and how they how, on how they work. But for me, I always I always start with the concept of the story, um, and, and I try to think at least of a concept that's kind of high concept that you can kind of if you tell somebody in a minute and they're, they're like, oh, that sounds cool, you know. Um, so that's that's kind of where I start off when I'm writing. If you are able to sell your idea, your concept to the other guy and pass his muster, let's say, and right. and his seal of approval, it's like one way to know that there's a, at least a kernel of idea that somebody else would like, you know, <laughs> that the world uh, out there may be interested in. If I'm able to convince David for the first time, maybe I will be able to convince more other people to to be interested in that script. When I'm trying to come up with an idea or write a script, it's would this be a movie that I would be in the audience for? And it's it's interesting that some, I, I know people that write scripts that they would not go see that movie it was made. And I'm like, why would you write that then if, if you're not even the audience for the movie? Um, so I try to write a movie that's not the movie that I, not what I would want to see because really what I want to see is the producer of my last film spanked in public. I read a movie that is the kind of movie that I would want to see, that I would stand in line to see, that is, you know, the, an existing kind of movie that I'm sitting in the audience for. I do think it takes some experience, and again, I think it takes some um, missteps sometimes as a writer that you think, oh, this is a great idea, and you write it and realize, yeah, this is there's not enough to this idea yet, or I haven't developed this idea enough to get a full series out of this idea. I mean, I've definitely gone in to pitch ideas, you know, whether it's for a film or a TV pilot or something, and, uh, you know, I, I, th I think I get it, and I think it's a good idea, and then somebody will say, well, I like the idea, it's a little compli- it's going to get a little complicated, though, because, because of A, B, and C. Um, and and I, to me, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I get it, you know I, know, I know what the idea, I can totally see how this idea can work, but if I were to write that idea myself, and sometimes I'll go back and try to outline it a little bit just to see, to test it, and I'll realize, yeah, it is, it is a little complicated. It sounds high concept, it sounds simple and fun, and you can see what the movie is. You know, you can see the whole movie. It's like a, like a, a carpet that rolls out in front of you. You can just see the whole thing, what it is. But sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes it is more complicated than you think. So there has to be kind of a, 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 a you know, sometimes people say, God, I wish I thought of that idea. You know, something's just this simple, beautiful in its simplicity. How do you two know when you have a good film idea? I mean, I'm sure the two of you come up with ideas all the time, you're always thinking about it, but how do you know that this is something that's actually workable? Do you ever know? <laughs> no, I think that uh, you know when you start like throwing stones at it and seeing if it holds up or if it breaks down, you know, and I think that's when, you know, you know if it's going to work or not. You have to try to poke holes at it and, and then see if after that the, the, the idea still holds up. I think that's how you know that yeah. it can be a movie because there's a lot of problem solving that goes into actually writing a movie. And, and time as well, just the passage of time. If you, after a year you're still in love with the story, it's always a good sign. You know, you, you, you come up with ideas that feel great for a week or two, and then week three, week four, you start like dragging your feet, you don't really like them, and then you drop them. But if you've been working on it for a year and you still feel strongly about it, it's definitely a good sign. But in science fiction, I wouldn't wait for a year because then somebody else is gonna just come up with something similar at some point. You know, when you're working in science fiction, it's very dangerous to wait 
because you know that there's some guy out there somewhere who has some sort of a similar uh, idea, you know, so. But I think it happens with all genres. I mean, the, yeah. the writer of A Nightcrawler uh, and director, what's his name? Dan Gilroy. Dan Gilroy was saying in an interview how he was freaked to death while uh, uh, while writing the script, hoping that there was nobody out there that would beat him to it, you know, to write a, a, a movie about uh, L.A. local news and, and all that stuff. So it happens to everybody, I think. Do you think ideas are in the ether? Yeah, I mean, I think that they're everywhere and... and Sometimes you, you write a movie and then you make the mistake of going online and reading the message boards and that's where everybody's like ripping you a new one and they're all like <laughs> saying, yeah, this was stolen from this uh, Japanese manga from the 80s or this was stolen from this episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt and you're like, I've never read or seen any of these things, you know, and, and it's just that a lot of people gravitate towards uh, similar concepts because they are universal concepts that are appealing to writers and I think are appealing to, to audiences too. Generally it's, it's considered uh, an idea that you can, that, that's um, is very easily understandable in, a, in a, a sentence, a couple of sentences. You know, if you're pitching something, pitch a high, pitch a high concept. Three secretaries conspired to murder their boss, nine to five. Uh, you know, an actor dresses as a woman to get, to get a job on a soap opera because he can't get any other work and learns to be learns to appreciate women more as a result of it, Tootsie. I mean, that kind of thing. You know, something that, that has a high, now, the, again, those movies are quite a, little less, a little less popular now, those high concept comedies or those high concept ideas, but you still need a concept that is strong and simple to, to, to understand and for people to get. You know, what, how will they market it? You know, what'll be on the poster? What'll be in the trailer? For just people to get it, you know, and it, it doesn't have to be anything that that wild or that imaginative, but it just has to be relatively simple to state. Um, otherwise, sometimes ideas get so complicated that they get very convoluted, and that shows up in the in the writing and sometimes the film itself. So it's about keeping it simple but interesting and 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 uh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, clever and and unique. Concept and budget are are two different things. Uh, a high concept movie usually means a higher concept budget in general and that would be like your action pictures, your hero, superhero pictures, uh, things like Star Wars, things that have what they call the tent pole. You've probably heard that, that term before, a tent pole effect. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, I don't think it's, you, and most of them you'll notice are based on something that's been adapted from another piece of, of material like um, comics, a book, a novels, that, that kind of thing. High concept is The Hangover. A bunch of guys, you know from the movie poster, I mean a lot of people, I know a lot of your audience knows what high concept is, but there are those who, who don't and it's terminology we use a lot and it's basically where the concept is very big and immediately recognizable like from a movie poster. So the hangover and it's the guys are, you know, we all know it's the hangover and it's Vegas. You can tell from the movie poster and they all look like they're a wreck. And it's uh, the 48 hours before Bachelor is to walk down the aisle. At his bachelor party, they go to Vegas and uh, his friends lose him and they have now four, and don't have any rec recollection of what happened the night before and have 48 hours to find him before the wedding. Uh, that's one example of big, con uh, big concept. Speed is a big concept. Anything that's based on a brand like Transformers, it has an immediately recognizable built-in audience brand value. So the opposite of that would be a movie like Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, in fact, most of the movies that win the Oscars are not high concept. Um, Slumdog Millionaire, Million Dollar Baby, Okay, if you were to pitch this, I'm going to do a, you know, not justice to the movie, but if you think about it, like trying to get a studio to, um, this is a story about a girl who comes from a trailer park and she wants to be a boxer and she's mentored by this older dude and um, she winds up getting, um, injuring herself to the point where she becomes paralyzed on the way down and she uh, paralyzed from the waist down and basically asks him as an act of kindness to, um, you do euthanasia. So she does, okay, who would buy that? Um, not, you know, Slumdog Millionaire, this is 
was a great story, great movie. Um, no known act American actor, but you did have a, a an A list director, Danny Boyle. So that is what definitely helped get it made, and it was also based on a book. Um, uh, Sling Blade, another one, magnificently written script. And some of these movies would definitely be harder to get done today. But um, the uh, you take Juno, you, you know, family drama, teenage girl gets pregnant. I mean, really, that used to be like an after-school special, or uh, in no disrespect, um, you know, more of a TV movie than a feature that would build such a big following. Uh, this year, Lady Bird. Um, you know, that's not a high concept, rite of passage with the young girl, and, but it was so well written and it resonated so much uh, with people, the mother-daughter relationship, the notion of growing up in a small town. And so the, what makes a script marketable? The script like Juno and um, with Lady Bird, the, the quality of the writing, the freshness of the characters, the truthfulness of the characters, that then becomes marketable. A high concept usually means something that uh, is, it, you, can, you can do a lot more with it in terms of, well, there can always be sequels or prequels. Those tend to be more high budget and more high concept in terms of it's a, a larger world, um, more characters, and they can do, like I said, uh, more with it. They can continue on uh, an adventure with all of those characters. So uh, that's why I think a lot of them you'll see are adapted from other pieces of, of uh, material. And what's a good test if somebody thinks their script is high concept? How can they kind of run it through some tests? Because maybe they find out that it's actually low concept and they're just not aware. Um, I think genre. Uh, is one way. Uh, if you look at the ones that usually make the most money or that are based on other pieces of material, a lot of times they fall into science fiction, horror, um, uh, fantasy or sci fantasy. Those are the most popular genres for that. Uh, certainly if you look at things that are action adventure like The Born Identity, that's another one that uh, you, you can do a lot with because it's there's always going to be a new adventure as this guy is trying to find out his real identity. For new people coming in, new writers coming in, writing a nice refreshing uh, project that's in another arena that doesn't require a huge budget and a lot of special effects, that's the way to really get a sense of can they develop characters? Can they carry a story all the way through for, for 90 minutes to 100 minutes? And can they, can they give us good roles that actors want? So that, I think, is, is, is better is if you try and do a, a, a lower budget, lower concept in terms of um, a genre or, you know, that's the way to do it. In the very beginning, seriously, coming up with a good idea is the most important thing. And I was coming up with like sort of um, basic genre idea. So I would write like a basic cop story and that's fine for television, not fine for cinema where it's all about the event. It's all about something being big and larger than life. So my ideas were like too small to begin with. And uh, that I have a string of scripts with like they're, they're got great scenes, great characters, but the idea is way too small. It's not, it's not involving and interesting enough for people to spend 12 bucks to see the movie. Uh, on top of that, whatever it costs for the king size popcorn and the king size drink, you know, it's, it's, it's a life's fortune to go to the cinema these days. Blade Runner is one of my top favorites. Although that didn't do as well when it, when it opened. And like, uh, it, it was actually considered a flop and only became a classic through, through word of mouth and just the, the sheer visual of, of the story. That's an interesting concept when, when something doesn't show the numbers, but then there's this cult audience. Oh yeah, that yeah. Loves there's, it. there's quite a few movies like mm -hmm. that. Like Shawshank Redemption is another one that, that kind of flopped, uh, op uh, you know, uh, box office, but then created, you know, life of its own just from the sheer you know, audience. You know, it's like wow that they responded to it. Uh, what and is that about? That just uh, most I would think it's probably about concept. 
Um, I mean, you know, when you look at the concept for Shawshank Redemption, there's nothing appealing about it, right? I mean, okay, this is a movie about, you know, two people in prison, you know, okay. Uh, but when you experience it, and this is something too, a lesson for writers is that just because you don't have a high concept, now if you're a beginning writer, high concept is paramount. It helps you because it helps you break in because you will get, your script will be requested. And then once they get the script in front of them and if it's well executed, then you're, you're on your way in. But, so I don't recommend having low concepts when you're a beginner. But in this case, I mean, it was Frank Darabont, it was uh, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen King's uh, novella. So, but it was, a, it was a low concept. There was nothing about the concept that made it appealing. So it didn't really drive audiences to the theaters at the time. But the execution is masterful. And so that's what, re once you're in there, once you're in the door and you experience it, then you go, my God. And then you tell others and word of mouth, that's how it happens, you know. So that's the case with, with that. Anytime I would, I'm going in to pitch something, you know, I'm trying to go in, you go, try to go in and pitch something that's, that's relatively clear and simple to understand uh, in terms of what the world is going to be, what, where the entertainment value is going to come from, where the conflict can be. And a lot of that is just inherent in those couple of sentences. Um, and, uh, and sometimes it makes a good film or TV series, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's not everything. But if you've got a good character attached to it, you know, chances are you have a good shot of, of at least having a good piece of material from it. So if it's too wordy, Right. It, it needs right. to be reduced. Yeah, and you know, like anything, that if you when you start explaining anything to somebody, you know, uh, and when if and if people who are not sort of natural pitchers of stories um, or don't do it for a living or whatever, you know, somebody's like somebody will come to me and they'll say, "I just had the most amazing experience. You've got to write a movie about this." And I said, "What is it?" And they'll say, "Well, okay, I was standing on a street corner, and before you know it, they're talking for twenty minutes about this story. You're lost. You, you got lost at minute four and there's, there's no story to it, or you think there's something funny, but it's just too complicated. What's the movie? What's the story? You know, wh why am I gonna laugh? What do I do with that? You know, there's a lot of that. So yeah, you have to keep it, you have to keep it simple, you know, and unique. I think part of the trick is knowing when the idea has entered your brain and rather than just thinking, oh, well, that, that's a funny situation that that happened or that's an interesting situation and not connecting it to, hey, wait a minute, I can write about that. I, um, I wrote a play about my parents and my parents' toxic marriage and divorce and a fairly dark time in my life. And the um, play uh, was going to have two stage readings at the Pasadena Playhouse with a well-known actress playing my mother in, uh, at the reading. And I was very excited about this. And I hadn't talked to my mother in many years at that point in time. And I was walking around really in a sunny mood about, wow, this great actress is going to be reading my words in my play in front of an audience. And I was so excited. And then I had this waking nightmare that my mother was going to show up at the reading and jump up on stage and say, that's not true. That's a lie. You have to hear my side of the story. And I just sort of laughed at myself for being paranoid. But then it occurred to me, I went, hey, wait a minute, that's a good idea for a play. Someone who's been writing about their family and their family descends upon them. And it's not a fully formed idea. You have to then do your work as a writer and say, okay, so who are these people? Why haven't they talked to each other? What happens when the person uh, comes up on stage? How does the situation get more complex than more complicated or funnier or any of those things? Who are the other people involved? All, all of that work that's the, the job of being a writer, of, of taking a germ of an idea and trying to grow it into a full-blown um, piece, whatever that piece is, if it's a web series or, or a play. But I think you have to develop the skill of being tuned in to your thoughts and feelings, the world around you when you're watching other people in order to know when an idea presents itself. The idea doesn't always say, hello, I'm giving you an idea for a story now. That's part of being a writer, recognizing when the idea has presented itself. Well, they have brilliant ideas, but as I've discussed in other uh, places and in other uh, other uh, videos, uh, the, the most overrated part of the screenplay equation is the idea. Ideas are really pretty useless and worthless. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, forgive me if I'm <laughs> repeating myself, but um, I am a uh, uh, one of those people who believes that Breaking Bad is one of the greatest achievements in the history of civilization. I think it's really great great drama. 
Um, so what's the idea that drives it? Uh, a, uh, a high school chemistry teacher um, gets a cancer diagnosis, and so he decides to go into the uh, methamphetamine trade um, with an incorrigible former student of his, a criminal, uh, you know, to sell drugs to support his family. That is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Many, many uh, companies shot that down. Um, and yet it is this triumphant uh, achievement, 62 hours uh, of a TV series, every frame of which uh, is engaging and, and, and captivating and um, uh, involving. And, and uh, the, uh, uh, so how did that happen? And the answer is they told a good story. It's where the story, uh, it's really all about story. That's what we believe at UCLA. That's, that's what I believe. A few years ago, I mean, imagine if somebody came up to you and, and said, hey, I have an idea for a movie. Uh, this guy stutters, uh, but he has to give a speech, so he hires a speech therapist. They work on the speech, and he gives the speech at the end of the movie. If somebody told you that that's going to win the Oscar for best picture and best screenplay, you figure uh, they're crazy. And yet that is, of course, uh, the King's speech. And um, again, I think it just demonstrates the uh, uh, the value of story and the valuelessness of ideas. And I think that very young people are more into ideas. They have great ideas. I like to say when you have a great idea, if you have a really, really great idea for a, a screenplay, that's all you've got. I mean, what remains after that? Everything. The, the uh, characters have to be invented. The dialogue they speak has to be created. It has to be punchy and peppy and provocative. Um, and pungent, I'm just getting into peas now, um, and poetic, and it has to be worth listening to all for itself just because there's something kind of charming about it. But beyond that, it can't be just for itself. It also has to uh, advance the story in a palpable, measurable, identifiable way, likewise expand the audience's appreciation of the characters. It takes time. Uh, for me to give you an idea about a movie, I can you know takes a, a handful of seconds to walk you through the story of the movie. It takes the length of the movie a couple of hours, so that's where the value is. Look, there's two sides to every idea, um, and 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 one is knowing the time and the place. So, uh, for example, a lot of filmmakers hold their cards so close to their vest or their chest. Uh, that it's self-defeating. Classic example, most studio executives in the marketing department will tell you that they are considered Satan by filmmakers. Filmmakers will not share one iota about their film, one frame of their film, until it's absolutely locked and loaded. Which means that the marketing department has precious little time to really think about and be creative and come up with great concepts and execute on those. It's a last minute, 11th hour deal, and it almost always is, right? Is that in the filmmaker's best interest? I suspect not. Um, I know that when um, uh, many, many years ago, I did a picture at Universal, young writer, director, his first directing gig, and together we went in with storyboards, and, we, and, I, and I insisted that we have someone from every department present or two people from every department, whatever could show up. We had like, 16 or 18 people in the room representing every conceivable area of marketing. And we presented to them and said, look, we just came to say hi. We want to <laughs> know what you do, and we want you to uh, be aware of our little project, because it's not the biggest on your lot. And so if you could, we just want to share with you a little bit about the genesis, the history of the project. We want to share some storyboards. By the way, the storyboards suck, and you guys are so much smarter, but it was just some, a way we could communicate to you. But most importantly, before we leave, after we've shut up and we've had some Q&A, what we really want from you is we want your guidance telling us, while we're out on location shooting, what do we need to bring back? What do you need to do your job better? What kind of still images, what kind of B-roll? What do we need to bring to you so that you can be the best? They literally said to us, we're veterans, we've been here 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, whatever. We've never, ever had filmmakers conduct this kind of a meeting. That was at Universal Pictures. 
wow, okay? So there, there's, there, is, there is clearly this sort of tradition in, in, in the human race to hold very, very dear, uh, to keep very private our, what we consider our IP, our baby. And I think sometimes it's service and sometimes it's, it's self-defeating. You know, it's, uh, you know, but I, I, I think you just have to sort of be sober about it and, 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 you know, look at what other successful people do and how they do it. And um, the flip side of that is I never worry that much about people stealing what I have. I have this crazy idea that each of us is so gifted and special in the way that we would do something that no one could steal any of my ideas and, and do it the way I would do it. Let them, let them do their version of it. You know? So I can write a book or I can produce a movie or I can, I can nurture a recording artist or whatever those things are. An idea is worth very, very little in Hollywood. It's the people and, 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 and their ability to deliver on an idea and birth out of nothing. That's what we do. We birth out of thin air something very concrete, very compelling, hopefully, that moves people, happily or sadly. Um, I think it's the doer, not the idea. So I think theft is actually an interesting concept in a world of IP. And I don't really take out an insurance policy. I don't worry about it. I don't think about it. I always like to, to, to approach a log line of one, be able to explain the, the story that you're talking about. You know, your, the, the plot of your story needs to be teased in the log line. But at the same time, if you can also take, if you can also set up the larger play in the, in the log line, which primarily is uh, creating a world and be able to communicate the story world in that log line, then not only do you tease the plot, but you also tease the world, which is the bigger play. And so, uh, so the log line is just the starting point uh, that uh, your project has to exist beyond the log line. So it, the, your log line is just one story that's gonna take place, hopefully in this, in this larger world where multiple stories take place and cross over and connect in all these interesting ways. And so, if, but if you can even approach your log line with a with an interesting world attached and embedded in the log line then that's going to give you uh that's going to intrigue people uh maybe even more than the plot itself so if you remember the trailer guy a uh, guy named uh, don lafontaine he was in a world you know he would start his the, like he's the movie trailer guy he the, the, like would always do those voiceovers right right he would, uh, he sort of coined that in a world thing. Sure. And what, what he's doing is, in a world, he sets up the context of a story world. And then he's going to tell you in the midst of a trailer what the story is inside that world. So, you know, in a world where all, where one day a year all crime is legal. We have a family who is being terrorized by somebody, right? So, so that's like, uh, you know, that's how to set up the purge. So the, the story world of The Purge is a, is a country where one night a year, all crime is legal. Interesting story world, interesting concept that's, that, that is far bigger than one individual story. But if you can say, in a world where all crime is legal for one night a year, then move into your individual plot. Now you've intrigued me based on the plot, but you've also intrigued me because there's a cool world. So, so, so it, it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's like, an establishing shot in a movie. So, you know, an establishing shot in a movie is if, instead of cutting directly into here where we're doing this interview, we're gonna first show the outside of the entire building and then move in here. Right. So the reason an establishing shot is a, is a normal thing in filmmaking is because the audience is more comfortable knowing where we are than moving into something very specific. And this is just the way we like, the humans and audience, this is the way we think. And this is what we're comfortable with. Because if you just jump directly into a scene, it can be disorienting. This is why you need an establishing shot. So I look at, at seeding a story world inside of a log line like having an establishing shot for your log line. 
So in a world where all crime is legal for one day out of a year, that's the establishing shot. Then we're jumping into the scene, which is your individual plot, which, you know, you have a, a, a husband and wife who, who you know, uh, uh, seek to survive the night from a guy who breaks in their house. Right. So, so that's, so it, it's, it's an interesting thing of like, how do we create big concepts from the, from the beginning? How do we create the big IP? Uh, but then ultimately we get down to a point where we need to be able to execute and communicate it on a very small level. So how do we create Star Wars? How do we create something massive? How do we create something that can s sustain for 20, 30, 40 years? But then when I'm talking to you as a producer or after I'm at a pitch fest or I'm talk whoever I'm talking to, how do I boil it down to a line? What, because again, we need a good story world and we need a good story. How do I do both in a log line? Typically log line fo focuses on the story, but at the same time, I need the cool story world. But I don't wanna just pitch the story world without the story because then my, then, then my product's not gonna work. So I need both. And so I think you craft the log line in a really interesting way to do both. It's just a different type of a process but, uh, to, to approach it, but I think it's always very helpful.